Hey guys, we're back at the piano and today we're talking about connecting the lower body to the instrument. This is such an interesting thing to connect more of your body to the instrument when you're playing. And the ultimate is the lower body because the upper body is resting on the lower body. So the lower body is implicated in bringing this body, this weight into this piece of furniture, <laughs> all right, to make, to make some really nice um, phrasing and sound as well, okay? So the example we're gonna use for this video is the intermezzo of uh, Brahms, opus 118, number one, okay? I know everyone would love to hear number two. But we'll do that another time. That would be actually a really nice video to do live. So look, look out for that one on the calendar. All right, now let's look at this. We're just gonna look at the first few bars. So we have, and that's it, okay? That's really what we're gonna look at, especially those two octaves. Same thing here. How do you bring your arm in from here, okay? This is the exercise. The movement can be subtle, can be very subtle, but makes a huge difference. The question is, where does the movement begin in the body? That's very important, okay? So we're looking for movements when we're connecting the lower body. We're looking for movements that begin at the base of the spine, the sacrum, uh, even in the legs, the psoas, and being really aware of the way the weight is distributed on the two sit bones. Okay, and also the way the um, the way the waist uh, tilts like this, right? Like this, this sort of thing. Okay, not coming from here, not coming from here, but coming from here, right? This is bringing us forward, and we don't need to move very much to be able to bring this. So this is a very good first exercise. Just relax everything, and start moving. Uh, keep the elbows, you know, exactly like. You know, you can glue them to the arms if you have a hard time with this. But the idea is that you just start moving around uh, kind of like you would in your Pilates class, you know, making circles like this uh, right from that uh, sacral uh, second chakra area, um, the Tantian, as they call it in the you know, martial arts and that sort of stuff or the Eastern stuff. So we're finding basically that that point and look at how that's affecting the position of the hands and arms, right? <clears throat> now, a lot of times at the piano, you're gonna be moving forward like this, but you don't wanna collapse here, right? We don't want to this. The upper body doesn't need to collapse. We can still... That movement was connected from here, but this stage straight, right? No need to go like that. You can keep the upper body straight while this moves forward, right? This is moving forward like that, right? Okay, so we're finding the connection. This is hard to do because my C is still not fixed on this piano, the C6. All right, now here's my favorite exercise. This one, it does it for me, okay? It does it for a lot of my students as well. Put your two fists here. And now you can also do here. This, this works on, an, on a grand piano. You can put your fists here and push. Push until you get your knees off the ground, your feet off the ground, rather. See, my feet are, are off the floor. And the idea, on an upright, or even on a grand, you can do here. Here is maybe just as good. So my feet are off the floor, right? This is pushing forward. The tailbone is pushing backwards. This lengthens the spine. So not just like this, okay? Everyone's gonna do this at first. Now push back with the tailbone, like you're sliding the bench back, right? Kind of, you don't have to slide the bench back, but what should happen is the spine straightens. That's good. Now you establish, you establish the connection from the base of the spine to the instrument, right? <clears throat> this is kind of like going backwards. We're going backwards to find out after how to get it start from there and go here. So now we're kind of starting by pushing and then, you know, pushing the tailbone back, pushing forward with the fists. So just try that exercise and straightening the spine. These should, the feet should be off the floor. You can lift your knees up. That's very good. 
all right once you have that just a little extra you know i i like to do sometimes i'll put my hands on the keys and do the same thing again sometimes i'll even play a chord and do it playing the chord okay that's a little acrobatic okay but it, it does help because after that what comes very op obvious is this right when you're when you're done with this you go forward like that and that's what we're looking for that's exactly the movement we're looking for so you can easily discover it this way right gosh i could pound on that c here right you can try to be as musical as you want and it's nice it's not that you can't it's nice but this has so much more flavor and charisma and personality to it and a better sound and it feels better and there's a better connection when you have this the difference should be night and day Okay. It becomes easy to stretch things. It becomes easy to put tension in music. We take Brahms as an example because he has such a thick texture. So that's really useful for thick textures. Okay? I think we'll keep it to that for, for, for now. But we can talk about this a lot, this whole thing. So use those exercises. This one here, doing this. Just moving from the from the waist. If you don't have it, you'll be like this, right? You'll leave your arms where they are. The arms should move with the body so that this happens, right? This movement is coming from the base of the spine. Sometimes you also bring the right foot, which is about here. You can't see it, but I'll bring it back. I'll bring it a little bit back. So my the left foot. I'm sorry. The right one's on the pedal. So the left one, you can even bring it back a little bit just to have a little, it's as if you're gonna stand up. You're almost standing up, right? So try it, practice it. You might not get it overnight. It took me about three months before any of this made sense. I had someone who, teaching it very well to me. So some people get it a little quicker than others. Some people, it takes a year, okay? If you get it overnight, I congratulate you. I'm going to congratulate myself a little bit too because I think I might have something to do with that. But try it out and find it. It should feel natural, okay? It should feel natural. Usually the mistakes I see the most, or not even mistakes, it's just the, the let's say, the, the, the path that that happens when a student is learning this what they go through is usually getting it backwards first so they'll do something like this they'll do the movement afterwards which is kind of sort of useless but not quite useless again it's just part of your learning process right so eventually this exercise should really help Feel that how you can make the movement start from there it's just like you're about to stand up or you're about to go pick up a heavy box the movement starts from here that's natural all right enough of Brahms try it out be patient and don't give up if you like the video don't forget to like and check out our calendar coming out very soon on the website with for live videos. We'll have a calendar and our live videos will work on specific repertoire. And if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon page. When you come to my master class, we'll look at it in person. It's the best in person. Take care. Peace. Over and out.